Hello everyone, this is Dr. Hisham. Uh, this video here will be an intro to engineering mechanics. Um, and so we'll know about what's really engineering mechanics, we'll have a, a definition for it, uh, understand the, the scope of its study, and also learn about or review a couple of things from physics and math um, that will help us move uh, through uh, the course. So what is engineering mechanics? Uh, it's a it's an applied science that deals with um, the effect of force on an object. Uh, so we have three categories that relate to that uh, kind of general definition of engineering mechanics. Uh, the first one here is rigid body mechanics, which is actually a big part of it is dealing with bodies in, in a static condition and also bodies in dynamic condition. Um, so th this is actually our sweet spot here in terms of statics is it's engineering mechanics of rigid body, uh, you know, um, uh, the study of such a case. And then there is the deformable body mechanics, which is here um, relating to study of the forces inside the material and how the material uh, react to that. And that will be covered in the Strength of Material course, which at Santa Clara University, it's C in G43. And then there is Fluid Mechanics. So the study of uh, fluid, and fluid here can cover uh, liquid and, or air uh, on, um, on the, the bodies around, uh, within the, the fluid. Um, um, and and, and that's, that's another topic, another course that you'll study if you are a civil engineer or mechanical engineer, you will study that in the future. So if we focus on rigid body mechanics, uh, and that's where statics, uh, this course, is about. So we'll introduce statics here by this question here. Why, if you look at these people here, have the same position when they start pushing a car? Um, I had this situation many, many times when I had my first old car. Uh, it was a manual Fiat uh, car, um, and um, now the, the question is why when you start pushing a car or start pushing anything, you start taking that position. So I'll take a minute, maybe pause the video, the video here, and start drawing every one of these people and imagine the forces that they deal with. So take a minute, I'll pause here. And uh, the answer to this question uh, we can get from statics. So statics is the uh, analysis of forces. So when we start kind of sketching these people using a stick man, you can say, um, and we start putting the forces that are applied on them. So in statics, we'll learn how to deal with free body diagrams. So we'll start drawing the body isolated from its environment and reflecting the forces that deal with this body. So we have here the car is pushing the, the person, the person has a weight, and then the, the ground is pushing that person up with uh, the force shown like that and the directions we'll analyze in aesthetics, the direction and equilibrium, all, all of these forces. Uh, but basically here the person is using the body weight to kind of push uh, the car, and using also the friction with the ground to have that support to resist the car pushing the person. And if you can compare this position to the other position, which is not what we we'll learn in aesthetics, it's not in a, a, a stable position. Because if you, if you look here, that person, once they start trying to push, uh, the car will actually push them back and they will tip. So they will not have much resistance to the car uh, uh, force pushing them back. So statics here is a study of equilibrium of rigid bodies under the action of forces. So let's define or dig deeper in this definition here and the three main keywords that we have. So uh, a force, it can be a push or pull, tension or compression, um, uh, but here on the body itself, it's you're either pushing a body uh, or pulling it. Uh, rigid body, our bodies assume that they have zero deformation, and this is very critical if we're going to uh, analyze only the external equilibrium of these bodies. 
Uh, and then uh, equilibrium here is the state where applied forces have equal uh, and opposite reactions. So based on Newton's law, there will be a zero acceleration. So that will be a good transition to Newton's law. So Newton's law of motion, we have three laws here. The first law is basically saying if the body is in equilibrium, it will uh, move, if it's moving, it will move in a constant velocity. Um, so the basic idea here, if, if you have equilibrium, you will have zero acceleration. That doesn't mean that it will not move. It will, it might move, uh, but it will have zero acceleration, so it will have constant velocity. So there is no change in the velocity here. The second law deals with now, if you have unbalance in the forces, kind of, I sound like a, a Star Wars, but if, if you have here unbalanced forces, so there will be a result of these forces pushing in some direction. So that makes this body moves, and the movement here comes with acceleration A. And that acceleration will be proportional to that resultant of net force, and it will be in the same direction of this net force. The third law here deals with the idea if you have a reaction from a body, uh, or action from a body on another body, the second body have a reaction force that counters the first force. So that reaction, action, reaction, they, are, they will be equal, opposite, uh, and collinear. So that's the third law. So in statics, we will deal with mainly the first and the third law. We're not dealing with the second law because that's the dynamics uh, aspect of engineering mechanics. So we'll not deal with it. So we'll deal with uh, bodies under equilibrium. So you have zero acceleration, and we'll deal with the concept of action and reaction uh, of forces. Uh, uh, one more thing to review here is the comparison between weight and mass. So we know that mass is not a force, but weight is a force, and we're analyzing here equilibrium of forces. So we just, before we deal with any question, if you're giving things in mass, you just need to understand that you need to switch from mass to weight, because weight is the force that we can analyze for equilibrium. Um, so here we have two uh, you, uh, you know, unit systems, uh, the international system and U.S. customary units. Pay attention to the units whenever, whatever system is represented in uh, the problems you deal with. Um, so mass is kilos in, in international system and slug in the U.S. system. Gravity here, um, uh, acceleration is 9.81 meter per uh, sec second square, and here it's 32.2 feet per second square. And if you have a weight, it's measured in Newton, if you're following international, and it's measured in pound force, uh, which will be equal to one slog times one uh, unit of acceleration uh, feet per uh, second square. So the question here, how much is a newton of one kilogram in newtons, or how much is the weight, sorry, of one kilogram in newtons? So you multiply one kilogram times the gravity, uh, so it will be 9.81 newtons. Similar question here on the other side, so it will be one slug, the, the weight of one slug, so you have to multiply the mass times the gravity, so you will end up with 32.2 pounds weight uh, for one slug. Also, some uh, adjustment of units here. Um, ton, when we say ton in, in U.S. system, it's a 2,000 pounds. But ton in an in international system is 1,000 kilos. There is also abbreviation here. KIP means kilo pound, so it's 1,000 uh, pounds. You can convert the units between the two systems. So uh, pay attention. You don't have to memorize these. Uh, there, there are a lot of resources you can use. But just be aware of the conversion here and know how to use them. Sometimes it's confusing. Should I divide over 0 0.304 at 8 or should I multiply uh, it to the value I have? So as a practice for you, uh, try to think about answers to these questions. How much is the weight of one kilogram in pounds? And how much is the weight of one slug in newtons? So I will not share the answers here. Try it yourself. And uh, in the class, we will uh, go over the solution of these questions. Another review we have to go uh, through quickly is uh, trigonometry. Um, so here, 
We will deal with vectors uh, in this course, and we need to n know how to deal with geometries um, so we can calculate the magnitude and direction of uh, force uh, vectors. So the first rule of tr trigonometry here is the law of sines. I have here the derivation of that, but it's basically a relationship that relates uh, the angle to the opposite uh, side of the triangle. So sine A angle over uh, the side opposite to it, A up lowercase, that ratio is the same ratio of the other pairs of angle on opposite sides of the triangle. So if you have here two sides and an opposite angle of them, you will be able to solve the whole triangle. Or the other way, if you have two angles and one opposite side of them, you will be able to solve the whole uh, triangle. Law of cosines uh, is another law that will be useful in solving um, uh, equilibrium of vectors. Um, so here you can see it's uh, uh, representing the same kind of, using the same convention here, uh, sides are lowercase letters and angles are uppercase letters. So a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. If I stop here, that's a right angle triangle, right? It's a right triangle here. But this is not a right triangle. General case, you don't deal always with what we would love to, uh, but we don't deal with right triangles. So we have this third term here to adjust for uh, the general case of triangles. So that's the formula for uh, uh, here um, uh, solving uh, the sides uh, uh, or the lengths of the triangle considering one angle um, uh, of it. Similar formula can be driven for um, the other side. So here this is if you want to solve for the A side, for the B side and the C side. Now a kind of trigonometry I said we, we needed to solve for uh, equilibrium if we're dealing with vector forces. Um, now, how we represent the forces in this course, we were represented either, either using the scalar method or the vector method. So the scalar is just focusing on the value. The vector is a package. Uh, so it defines both the uh, magnitude and the direction in one package, kind of. Uh, so the vector from physics, you will, you will see it's represented as uh, orthogonal components. Um, and I, I, here, I and J are the uh, unit direction uh, of x and y. Uh, so uh, a force vector can be like a bold letter like that or a letter with an arrow on top of it. So this vector here is this is the graphical representation of it and you can see fx, fy the components of it. Uh, another example here is that if you have a 200 pound in the x direction this is the way to write it as in, in the vector uh, format. We will see how we solve the, um, uh, the, the, uh, equ for equilibrium here with three main me methods. The graphical method, so we will draw to scale the force uh, vectors and try to use uh, parallelogram rules and the trigonometry rules. Um, uh, sorry, tri trigonometry is actually the second method. So we we'll use mainly graphical measurements to, for the first method. You will use the trigonometry rules for the second method, so you don't have to draw to scale, but um, try to, you know, um, draw it neat enough so you can still kind of make sense of the distances and angles. And then Cartesian addition. So Cartesian addition uh, will be actually the most efficient method, you can say, but we will learn about the um, other two methods uh, uh, in first before we heavily depend on the Cartesian addition method. So that was a quick intro into engineering mechanics and uh, statics. Um, we, we had a definition for it and we kind of uh, understood more about what forces, equilibrium. Um, and then we kind of had a review of the main um, knowledge areas that you will have to review from physics and uh, geometry and math. Um, so hopefully that was uh, helpful for you and uh, look forward to see you in other uh, videos. Thanks for watching.